Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Magic and Miracles, where you learn how to be the magician of your life. My name is Anna, and I'm your most favorite manifestation coach under the sun. Why? Because there's nobody else so dedicated to their clients under the sun, on the internet, <laughs> anywhere. I spend the most time with my clients. I hold their hand throughout the process of um, reimagining their life, creating magic in their life. I mostly coach in audios and email exchange. I recommend the audio exchange um, primarily because if you're just starting out with me, it's a very thorough process. Um, there is. Um, there are some um, telephone sessions included in the package, but for the most part, we exchange audios. Now, your audio has to be 20 minute max. I go through it thoroughly. I listen to it more than once. I take extensive notes and then I get back to you. It's a very thorough process, very therapeutic for you because you, you get to start with your childhood adolescence, uh, well into college years, up until now. There are also packages that are um, solely telephone ba based, telephone session based. And you basically have the choice of the option of me just being on the phone with you versus recording that telephone session, which is an hour each, and then analyzing it in the same way that I analyze the 20 minute audio and then um, proceeding with my feedback um, upon the next time that we communicate. Um, there are other things on my website, like a seminar and then the, the texting package. But ideally, I would like to, you know, recommend the audio exchange package or the telephone session, which is, you know, um, basically the most um, money. But it's really worth if you really want to be on the phone with me and you want me to analyze our conversation and get back to you with my notes. Now, at this time... Um, I feel uh, that I need to really, I never thought I needed to do this in all the eight years of my coaching um, experience. But at this time, I feel like I need to make this announcement. Um, my coaching agreement is going to include several, a couple more um, clauses, if you will. Now, I always said I'm not a therapist. And I don't think people, some people hear that when I say I am not a therapist, I am a coach. So please um, understand that I am here to coach. Now, there are some similarities, I, I admit, in my methods, but there's no, they're not the same. I do not have a license. I am a coach. One more time, I am a coach. In fact, it's the number one thing on the coaching agreement that you sign and, you know, whether you sign it or not, if, even if you started out with me, um, you came from YouTube, most probably. If you're coming from a YouTube situation, uh, I have different prices for YouTube people and my other clients that I've had um, all this time before uh, in the entertainment business. So you've seen that agreement. It's on my website. It's in force whether you sign it or not. Now, you need to sign it for me to continue coaching you. But I wanted to say that it's going to include, and like I said, I never thought I needed to say this, but it's going to include two clauses. If you are using illegal drugs, and by that, I don't really mean weed. I'm talking about hard drugs. You are not coachable. If even if you lie to me in the beginning and you say that you're sober and I find out that you're using even recreationally these kinds of drugs, you're automatically disqualified from my coaching. This is not the kind of situation here. And number two, if you're in violation of any kind of law, whether in your country or United States, um, doing some illegal shit, I do not want to be your coach. Okay, just please understand this is not the kind of party 
It's not going to happen. I will not be your coach. And even like I said, if you lied to me in the beginning and you said that you were not involved in anything like this, um, first of all, um, I will end up finding out um, I'm pretty intuitive. Um, and even if you lied to me, things come out eventually. And I don't care what kind of non-disclosure agreement you want me to sign. Um, if you are a criminal, if you're committing a crime, I'm obligated to report it, especially if it um, you know, involves you harassing me or threatening me or you know, basically alarming me to the point where I do not feel safe. So like I said, I never thought I needed to say that, but it recently came to my attention that apparently I do. So, you know, if you're listening and, and you understand that um, I don't play games, you know, th this is not that kind of situation where, you know, I don't have boundaries. I do. The coach has boundaries. So if you're going to make me feel alarmed, I do have the right to report you to the authorities for the above mentioned thing. So when you're signing up for coaching with me, you're going to need to acknowledge those two clauses. And even if you lie, it's going to be on paper that you lied, that you deceived me. Okay. Which one doesn't look good and, you know, basically terminates my coaching with you immediately. And I want nothing to do with you, but absolutely nothing. I put myself out there for people who really need help who want my guidance, who understand that how precious this is. I don't charge nearly as much as other coaches on the internet. So please um, be respectful towards the coach if you plan to get coaching and get the most out of it. Again, never thought I had to say this, but here we are. If you have a psychiatric disorder, the same goes in, in, in the same category. I'm not a psychiatrist. Again, if you have a serious psychiatric issue where you feel like um, you need to harass the coach and, and really like try to bring them down, you need help of another kind. If you're crazy and you know it, clap your hands and go the fuck into the psychiatric clinic. Seriously, though, like I'm tired of this shit. You know, no, again, no, I made a joke, but no judgment. If you have a psychiatric disorder, like you have a narcissistic um, uh, NPD or any kind of uh, all these things like borderline personality disorder, where it's like, who knows what personality will come up next? I cannot help you. I'm here to teach how to manifest, you know, not uh, manage your psychotic disorders. Please, like, don't do this to me. And most importantly, don't do this to yourself. It will not end well, okay? Because I know how to handle uh, these situations by now. I can understand, you know, people who don't have their shit together in life and are struggling through certain things. That I get. I'm here to help. But don't attack me. It's just not going to end well. It's not, You don't know me. You know, I'm going to hold you accountable. Seriously, though. No. This is my one and last warning. I, I don't, you know, I don't enjoy these kinds of situations when it takes away... Um, takes energy away from um, other things that I want to do in life or other people that I want to help. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be a problem. Let me just tell you this right now. And again, I understand anxiety. I understand being stressed out. I understand being even depressed when it's in my coaching. But when you start being like dis destructive and disruptive in my coaching, it, it's not going to last that long. Let me just say this, okay? And let's just close with that. If you have any questions about my coaching, um, for those of you who genuinely need um, coaching help, please uh, you know, comment or email me or text me, okay? But again, please be respectful and polite. And I'm going to update um, the coaching agreement by the time, um, by tomorrow it will be updated already. I think, you know, some people, I mean, I don't know, not, not a lot of people, but some people like don't understand that coaching isn't therapy. <laughs> I think it's just like, when I say that therapy doesn't help, it's for those people who, yeah, went through some shit, but can behave in the process of coaching and not start, you know, going ape shit. Okay. So that's that. So the subject of today is remember your magic. 
And I wrote this subject like literally uh, in the beginning of the week uh, when I started having these kinds of rock and roll issues. <laughs> and I'm being polite when I say that. Um, <laughs> I really just kind of like, it gave me pause how some people behave. And so sometimes some things happen and you fall off of the proverbial wagon of being in that blissful state, which I usually reside in 99% of the time. Um, and I had to really like compose myself and say, I need to remember my magic. Because sometimes people will try to shake you when you have something that others don't. And oftentimes we perceive like, well, I must be the problem. I've caused this. Well, yes, you did manifest this shit. But what is it telling you? It's telling you that, um, well, you know, it's really two things. Uh, one is when you start to create something that is really um, extraordinary and, and there's magic in it and you're out to help and, and, and give good things to people. Uh, well, not everybody's going to be receptive of it, even the people you're trying to help uh, because they're too stuck in their, you know, um, drama panorama and they're so, it, it's like... It, the stuckness of it really gives them away because they can't unstuck themselves. And so no matter what you do, um, you cannot um, negotiate, you know, them out of that situation, which is why I say uh, not everybody can be helped, unfortunately. And sometimes you manifest these people to show yourself something, which is that not everybody deserves your time. Not everybody understands um, magic. Not everybody understands or, or should understand what you're about. And you shouldn't give two shits about that shit. So they don't get it. So then what, what am I supposed to do? I'd rather go play with these other people who fucking get it, what I'm supposed to do here. And I'm doing it. Right? So... It's it's a creation of like focus, quite frankly, where sometimes you manifest people just to show yourself, well, don't spread your energy everywhere, okay? I, I like to play the protective mama goose sometimes to everybody in my coaching, but the fact is not everybody understands what I'm trying to do here. And like I said, they sometimes rebuttal me and um, make it seem like it's about me when it's really not, nothing to do with me. It's, it's about them, their situation, their drama panorama, their, their bullshit. And, you know, everybody has bullshit. It's not that. It's just how you go about it. And so remembering your magic when you deal with people like that, which is so apropos um, what, what I'm talking about, is bringing yourself back to the center, no matter what you witness on the outside, and say, oh, how interesting. So clearly, you know, this is some kind of, you know, situation that I created. Um, it's the outpicturing of uh, my fear, my fear always, and this is going to sound like so self-congratulatory, but my fear is not doing enough in life. And this is the absolute truth. My fear is like, I, um, I, I, I don't give enough, I don't do enough, and you know, I, I need to overgive and, and, and overplease and uh, do all this stuff for somebody in my coaching, in my life, and this and any other. And sometimes people take it for granted. So your fear might be that uh, you're not good enough in, in some different way, and so you manifest a third party or this, that, any other. It's the same shit, right, basically. So remembering your magic uh, comes with, like, boundaries. Like, you're not going to treat me this way. And in, in my experience, in, um, in the case of empath, which are most of my clients, um, they don't give themselves credit enough where they should and could, you know, 
think of themselves highly, higher certainly, ra that's raising the expectation and expecting more fucking magic out of their life. Instead of being like, well, where did I not please and where did I not do, pa pa pa. Okay, how about this? Raise your fucking expectations of what you expect of others. And stop, you know, giving so much, um, you know, constantly like, what else do I have to do? How about just be your fucking self? And rem remember your magic. Remember who you really are. Remember how um, extraordinary you are. The gold that you give, you know. Many times, like, again, this is not in the, you know, said in the, in a way that lacks humility or anything like this. But many times I listen back to my audios, to my clients and, you know, on my channel. And I'm like, where did this even come from? I don't even know where it comes from because I'm fucking channeling. I already spoke about that as well. And you know something? If somebody was to take me by the hand and give me advice that, you know, basically is the accumulation of everything I've studied and all the experience that I've had that certainly worked in my personal life and in the, client, in, in the lives of my clients, I would be like, uh, please, let me kiss your feet. But some people don't even understand um, what gold looks like. And so for you, your um, job, quite frankly, is to recognize that the you don't have anybody, you don't need anybody's approval, you don't need anybody's confirmation that you're gold, you're walking in into any experience knowing who you are. And anyone who kind of like starts to question it, you got to ask yourself, where are they coming from? What's their problem? What's going on with you that you have to bring me down? Because quite frankly, um, there's a difference between um, bringing somebody down and bringing somebody up. So if you know for a fact that you're bringing somebody up and they're trying to bring you down, you have to ask yourself why this is happening. What kind of person is this that I'm dealing with right now with and what kind of manifestation that is? Because there's no magic tomorrow. The magic is right now. And so everybody goes through trauma, drama, panorama. It's how you handle it. It's the kind of integrity you have. Remembering your magic means simply at the end of the day, you go back to that magical world that in which you exist as this golden Buddha, in which all the dreams are real, in which everything is exactly the way that you want them to be. I have never had a problem with this, which is why it's so bewildering, quite frankly. Um, never had a problem with it ever since I was, I mean, I don't know, uh, 10 or something, 10, 11. Um, and look, I've had dramas in my life. I've had traumas in my life. But I've always known how to go back to that magical world. And for me, it came from writing. The first creativity was writing and sewing. I learned how to sew when I was five. Um, writing stories, um, you know, painting, all that stuff. But I always knew how to bring myself back. And I'm very familiar with that world. It's very, fam it, I know what that feels like to be there. And that's why I don't really feel like attacking somebody for my own gain or disrespecting somebody. I know what it's like. Everybody's human. You can momentarily get angry and this and that. But bring yourself back to this golden Buddha-like state where it's like total bliss, total comfort, total magnificence. And, you know, the people who don't get that shit... It's like, it's a sad sight, is all I have to say. Because you don't have to do anything strange or crazy or illegal or be confrontational if you really are in concert with that magical world. Because that world is, I say magical, but it exists right here, right now. That parallel reality. 
right? So whatever, your SP, your money, your career, everything exists on that plane of consciousness. But that consciousness is very much in sync with the magic inside of you. That parallel reality exists right now because you have access to being magical right now. Right, so I'll give you an, an example. Um, every time I write a song, which I've been writing songs since I was 13, I feel like, again, channeling. It's the access to that world where I'm like, I, I'm not even responsible for any of that shit. I'm not even responsible for the lyrics. All I do is tune in myself, tune myself in to that um, frequency where I draw in the magic from. That's all you're really doing. Another example would be when I create dresses. Who the fuck knows where this is coming from? I have dreams. When I'm in my dream state, I dream of clothes and and making dresses all the time. I dream of lyrics. Sometimes I wake up and the song is in my head. I grab my phone and I record the demo. Who knows where all of this is coming from, from a parallel reality? You're not even, you're the channel of your reality is what you are, you know? And so to be, you know, treating um, this reality like it's a given, that it's not a gift, that you have to fight or uh, demand or, you know, be confrontational. That's fucking stupid as fuck. Life is a gift, a profound gift. When I create my dresses, I go in a zone. And that's the zone where everything exists. Sometimes I don't know which version I'm going to make of the dress because it's like 50 fucking five versions in my head of that dress. And you know, no lack of ideas. It's like abundant, innumerable ideas. I struggle to pick which fucking dress version I'm going to make because the ideas are so many. In the same way, and again, all of them are beautiful, but now look, you can create whatever the fuck you want version of your reality, and all of it is beautiful. SP, money, career, whatever, 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 bestseller, uh, movie, uh, whatever the fuck you're working on right now, okay? A million dollars. And, you know, nobody has to slave over anything like this. Like I said, the um, ideas are innumerable. They're all on that frequency. Sometimes you have to do very little to do it. Do you think I have to, like... Um, do something extraordinary to write another song or to, to come up with an idea for a dress? Fuck no. It comes to me. It just comes. It flows. That's the magic. And that's ev- with everything, with money in particular, with, with SPs. It just flows. You just have to let it. If you're in, in the mode of, mm, I got to get mine before they get theirs and, you know, fight with somebody or or do some stupid shit to get something you know what well good luck (laughs) it doesn't work like that remember your magic remember your magic remember that you have to start creating intelligently effortlessly so being completely in tune with your God state, with your God self. Go watch my video on God state, the power of God state, I think it's called. And so whether that's SP, again, money, career, um, whatever the fuck you're working on right now, it's easy. It's a piece of fucking cake. And the reason you're making it very difficult is because of your whatever bullshit chat that you have to process it i mean 99 percent of the time 100 percent of the time actually uh, has to do with beliefs with the belief work that's why we process beliefs a lot in my coaching because now look here's the deal you can have beliefs that are contrary to your desires and you can still let some magic in once in a while. And I've spoken about this mm, on my channel 
quite a bit, but it's not going to be consistent. To be in the magical state most of the time, 95% of the time, because I'm there all, like 95, 99% of the time. Once in a while, somebody really pisses me off. But to have access to the, this energy, you have to really work through your beliefs and stop accepting the shitty shit and be present in that magical world even though you fall off the proverbial wagon just like i said in the beginning of this audio okay so as long as you know the destination uh, towards your dreams the home feeling of that energy you've got it you've got that magic you've got that power no matter what momentarily yeah you might get pissed off la 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 but at the end of the day it's like who gives a shit you've got it you've got you've no you know that essence of that feeling where everything exists right now no matter what the person can tell you you're fucking stupid you're this that any other um, some people have disrespected me in my coaching. Your SP can say to you, oh, I don't love you anymore. And, this thing. and you like look at them. I'm like, oh, my God, this person is so confused. It's not even funny. It's like that St- uh, Gwen Stefani song. Your shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Your shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> Holy shit, bananas. I think that's where I got the inspiration for that saying. (laughs) You know, you just look at them like, are you okay? Like, please, your shit is bananas. You know, and you just go back to your magical world and you persevere in the direction of your dreams. And that's, that's how you treat it. The magic is stationary. It's always there. It's like you don't go outside to check if there's still air outside. You don't go outside uh, in the daytime to see if the sun is still in place in the sky or whatever, the moon at night. You know it's always there. The magical world is always there. The magic of yours is always there. That's what it really is. So temporarily your SP might be pissing you off doing stupid chat, some people may be doing stupid chat, but you're like, okay, fine, interesting, interesting creation, let's move on to, on to the next round, please, um, let's switch the channel, switch the reality immediately, because I'm kind of like tired of this bullshit, um, Again, be forgiving towards yourself as a human being, because sometimes, look, you know, some, times you will create shit that is really kind of like seems like it's an opposition of what you really want to create but one more time it's a convert confirmation of the fact that first of all you do create your reality and secondly that even the shitty shit will serve you down the road somehow somehow some way don't know how if you have this attitude it will always serve you and if nothing else, you look at the confirmation that somehow I manifested this, maybe to even show me that um, nothing can shake me, not a goddamn thing, not even this, I don't care, even you can fucking fall apart in front of me and, and act like a complete lunatic and I will still maintain my composure. Maybe that's the reason why. But the steady kind of like flow of magic depends on you. You have to be so in tune. Uh, you know you know this um, stand-up comedian, Cat Williams? I fucking love him. He's like, you got to be in tune with your star player. The motherfucker in the window. Uh, excuse me, in the mirror <laughs> window. <laughs> You got to be in tune with your star player, the 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 motherfucker in, in the mirror. And that's what I say. You have to be so in tune with yourself. Then you're like, I don't care. 
You can just fall apart right in front of me, act like a complete lunatic. And you know what? My life goes on and um, I, I'm still going to create magical shit. All the while, all the while you witness it and um, perhaps you learn how to create it. Maybe you won't. I don't care. If you're smart enough, you'll get on board. But if you're not, well, then forget it. N- bottom line is that you have to treat yourself like the most, the golden Buddha, the most important person in your world is you. Not in a narcissistic way, but in a very kind of like, I'm the shit. I'm the creator of my reality. I'm the golden Buddha. I, I run this world. Literally, I run this world. So whatever your bullshit shit is, it, it's irrelevant to me. I couldn't give two flying fucks about it. So whenever you get your shit together, we can have a conversation. But other than that, fucking forget it. It's the same thing with uh, a third party or, or uh, <clears throat> your, your SP. If they're acting out, if they're behaving some kind of weird way um, and basically um, annoying you, you're like, well, you know what? I deserve more than that. So whenever you get your shit together, we can have this conversation. You got to be strong enough to remember that you're the magic, not anybody else. Nobody else has the capacity to create your reality. Nobody else has the power to create magic in your life. So what the fuck are you waiting for? Like hanging on to people that may not even be like worth your time. Because you're the magic. You're too busy maybe waiting for some kind of an approval. Approve me, approve me, please. Ah. No, I don't need your fucking approval. Because I know I'm the golden Buddha. I know I'm made of fucking gold. And if you're smart enough, you're going to recognize it. Otherwise, well, good luck. That's it. And, you know, I mean, again, not in a narcissistic way, but in a very, like, confident way, where if you know you're a good person, you know you're doing something right, respect yourself. Raise your expectations. Ask for more. Ask for more money. Ask for more love from your SP. Ask for more, but not like, hey, give me more love, but like... Well, you know, this is just not going to be enough. Like, I'm going to be, um, quite frankly, respecting myself more. And if you're not coming aboard, like I said, you know, that's fine. But that's not enough for me. I want the best. I want the greatest. Because I am the golden motherfucking Buddha. So get on board or go fuck yourself, quite frankly. That's it. When you hold a position of this kind of situation where, like, I create the magic here. So you might have been like, you know, distracted by some bullshit. But at the end of the day, when you go to sleep, you know that you're the one with the magic. You have the magic wand. It's, it's called your mind. And your mind can create magic like overnight. It's the next move. It's the next move after you've witnessed some kind of like stupid shit. Okay, what's your next move? Let's have it. Let's decide what is going to be the next move. Because if you do remember that you're the magician of your life, then, you know, it's it's not important what you see right now. It really isn't. It's about remembering that it's up to you. Remembering the power of your magic and remembering... Um, that if you're made of solid gold, you know, first of all, you don't need, uh, you don't owe anybody an apology or an explanation in terms of being your best self. And if they don't understand it, well, then fucking forget it. Maybe that's not the person or that's not the situation for you. Treat your magic like it's fucking magic, okay? And that's when you get the best treatment. When you direct the energy towards respecting yourself and having um, appreciation for that magic inside of you, for that magical world, the world turns around and even though momentarily something might have happened, the world turns in your favor, especially because that something happened. 
that you didn't prefer originally and somehow magically turns in your favor. Thank you very much for listening. All the information for me is below. Until next time. Ciao, ciao.